Hey everyone, RJ here, and I hope that wherever you find yourself watching this video, that you are safe in light of the recent events. And we hope that you've spent this past week reflecting, listening to those voices around you, and engaging in dialogue around how we can make this world a better place for everyone in our society going forward. We encourage you to listen to messages from Kyle Harrison and Jules Henningberg and all of our African American leaders in our league to gain perspective and help us grow as a community. The PLL stands united in these following ways in order to bring about change. And we hope that you spend this week thinking about ways that you at home watching this video can generate change in your own communities. If you wanna learn more about some of these issues, hear from some of our players, we linked up a number of those stories and information down below. Brannigan just sheds a check from Byrne and then Macintosh! Okay, in this episode, we are talking about Chrome specifically and how a Chrome back 2020 is in the cards. And to help do that, we're bringing in Jordan Wolf, John Rannigan, and John Galloway to talk about how this year's 2020 Chrome team is gonna be different. We'll talk about offensive and defensive changes, the team's new culture heading into 2020, and ultimately answer the question why Chrome is poised to win the championship series this summer. Welcome to the first ever game of the Premier Lacrosse League, Archers Lacrosse Club and Chrome Lacrosse Club. Okay, let's talk about Chrome's 2019 season. They only won two games on the year, but that doesn't tell the whole story. Chrome lost five one goal games this season, the most of any team in the league. The first one came week one against the Archers in overtime. Mike Fett, oh, they score! Will Manning wins it! Game one to Archers! And then again in overtime week two versus the Whip Snakes. Takes a whack, gets the shot away, scores! Ryan Dreader, this week's hero! Then week three, they lost to Atlas by one goal. Shoot, scores! And Atlas hang on and can celebrate their first win. From 0-3, all decided by one goal. But when they won, they dominated. Their first victory came in D.C. 19-11 against the Chaos, where Jordan McIntosh put up seven points. McIntosh fires it home. And then McIntosh. The behind-the-back shot for McIntosh is his fifth goal. This was a long overdue win for the Chrome. Then their second win came against the Whip Snakes, 20 to 16, where they beat the previous record they set for most goals in a single game. Chrome needed a win to stay alive in their chance for a championship, and they put up 20. So Chrome obviously has the talent on their roster, but what is it that they need to do differently in 2020? So let's start off with their offense. They scored 120 goals in 2019. That is the most of any team team in the league. And now the Chrome at two and five boasts the best scoring differential in the league. Explain this to me. They also had the highest score differential throughout most of the regular season, but yet they couldn't close it out when it mattered the most. So what needs to change for Chrome in 2020? What a shot from Jordan Wolf. He goes bar down. You know, in regards to our offense, I think we're at our best when we're being unpredictable and we're being unselfish. And a dive near the crease goes in. What's unique about our offense is that we have a lot of guys who can do a lot of different things. You know, we have shooters like Matt Danowski, Jordan McIntosh, uh, downhill Dodgers like Ned Crotty. Crotty from two! John Rannigan. John Rannigan up against the shot clock. Guys like Gutterding who could do a lot of different things on the field. Gutterding finds an open spot. So I think as long as we're being unpredictable where we're dodging from, what sets we're using, um, as well as you know sharing the rock and being unselfish, I think we'll be successful. And I think it's one of the reasons why we, we scored the most goals in the PLL last summer. Wolf adds to it here for today points for Jordan Wolf. You know, last summer was tough. We lost a lot of tough, close one goal games. Um, those are a backbreaker for any ball club. I think for us this year, we just need to focus on the little things at the end of games, subbing correctly, um, you know, fundamentals in the fourth quarter, making sure we have the right personnel on the field. And I think we focus on those little things um, and then continue to build on our chemistry that we already have. I think we'll be successful in this coming year. Jordan Wolf had some of the wildest goals scored in 2019, man. I don't know how the Airwolf nickname didn't catch on, but if he has any type of year like he did last, it's gonna catch on this summer. But it's not just gonna take Chrome scoring more and more goals by their high-powered offense to experience success this summer. They're gonna need to improve on the defensive side of the ball as well. 
Let's take away the top side. Yeah. Let's hold. On the back side, we're pulling yeah. all of our defenders in. We're going to make them come across let's the crease, finish under, under duress. Yeah. Alert off the ball. Alert hey, off the ball. Let's hey, go. Let's get one stop. Defense on three. One, two, three. Defense. Defense. John Galloway had some highlight reel plays himself this summer and really established himself as the vocal leader in the Chrome locker room. He also did a lot of talking on the field as well. Get out of bounds! F yeah! You gotta go, you gotta go, Joey! You gotta go, Joey! You're right! F yeah, Joey Fletcher! Yeah, Wildcats, baby! Now Galloway's gonna go in depth on some of the personnel changes on Chrome's defensive unit and talk about how those changes overall are going to improve their defense as a whole and give them an edge come the championship series this summer. Take it away, John. Thanks, RJ and Lisa. So yeah, the 2019 season for the Chrome, especially on the defensive side of the ball, was not exactly what we expected it to be. And you know, it starts with me first. To, to be able to play in this league and to have success, you have to have somebody in the net that you can feel comfortable making saves on a consistent basis. And we understand that we need to come into the PLL Championship Series prepared to be able to, to help carry our team on that side. But Really, as a, as a unit, I think the challenge in 2019 was just the inconsistency of the lineup. Uh, it's, it's difficult to change your verbiage every week, to introduce new terms, uh, to really put together a game plan when it's, it's game by game versus uh, you know, creating a little bit more of a camaraderie and continuity on the defensive side. Going into 2020, the addition of some new personnel, specifically on the defensive side, we feel really confident and comfortable that that unit can start to shore up what we were lacking in the 2019 season. I think you're going to find a much more blue collar approach on the defensive end. Uh, we bring in, you know, Will Hawes and Donnie Moss at the short stick defensive midfield. Uh, in my opinion, Will Hawes is the best at his position. And then you talk about the close defense and just the the amount of improvement that we've seen over the offseason there. Uh, the addition of James Barclay, uh, who I had a chance to coach at Providence and I know is a fantastic on ball and off ball player, fantastic off the ground, willing to, to serve a lot of different roles. Uh, the addition of Thomas Rigney in the draft, uh, his physicality, his toughness, his humility. And then Resetti. I think Resetti is a huge add in the college draft. You know, anybody in the college lacrosse scene knows the impact he had at, at BU. And Jesse Bernhardt, obviously a USA defenseman, a guy that I had a chance to play behind in, in Israel. That's going to be a special addition for us and more than anything, his IQ. When you have the likes of Mike Manley back there and, and, and hopefully Joel White. Back to his own teammate and a nice handle here and what a shot by Joel White. And you know, again, our goalie unit, it's exciting. You know, it's, it's hard not to think that there's a chip on our shoulder for what happened in 2019 and, and we're excited to prove a lot of people wrong. And I can assure you that we're planning to make sure that we, we help build a unit that, that we're proud of and, and that Coach Sudan will be proud of as well. So while the defense had almost a complete overhaul in 2020, it's not just changes on the field that need to be made for Chrome to get on the right track in 2020. Let's play for each other and let's claw back into this game. That's all it is, boys. Everybody's eyes. Everybody's hey. eyes. Hey. Everybody's eyes. Everybody's eyes. Everybody's eyes. What about the intangibles? What about the culture of the team to help them be equipped, not just on the field, but off the field as well, to help them close out those one goal games that ultimately defined their 2019 season? You got something here. You really got something here. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get this thing turned around. You're going to want to be a part of it, but what did happen? Tim Sudan came on as head coach back in December, and with him, he brings a new staff and a new New coaching style. We asked midfielder John Rannigan to give us some perspective into Coach Sudan and what is it about him that's going to change the mindset of Chrome in 2020. I think the best word to define the 2019 Chrome Across Club would be inconsistent. We had some great quarters and some great halves in 2019, but quarters and halves don't win you across games at the professional level. So we need to be more consistent. All right. And what does that look like? More consistent in how we approach every day. More consistent in how we shoot, how we dodge, how we defend. Consistently being a great teammate. Consistently working your ass off, right? Those are the intangibles that make a great team. And we want to be a great team. We're doing the little things right. We're playing for each other. We're playing together. That's what's going to keep us going. Together on three. One, two, three. Yeah. And I think having Coach Sudan Sudo as the coach for the Chrome this year is going to be awesome. He's a... Uh, absolutely great coach. He's a has a wealth of lacrosse knowledge, but his best attribute is he's just a good dude. He's a he's an upstate good dude, and we're lucky to have him because he makes culture the number one priority for his team. And I think ha at the professional level, having a good culture is paramount to success. And one of the things I, I really like about Sudo as a coach is he leads, but he allows his his players to take ownership of the of the team and of the results of the team. And I think we have a lot of guys on the Chrome that 
are willing and able to take on that challenge. And having that ownership of your team, I think, is really important in those close games in the fourth quarter. Uh, so, again, I'm just really excited to get going. It's going to be a hell of a three weeks of the championship series. And go Chrome. Let's go. So consistency will be key for Chrome. And it's on the players to execute. You can't just be one dimensional in this league. You can't just have a high powered offense like they did last year or an incredible defense or a great locker room atmosphere. You need every single piece to come together for each game. And that's what Chrome's gonna have to prove this second go around in year two this summer in an even more competitive atmosphere. If that's even possible. Also, I know, I have a stuffy nose today. You do not have to remind me about it in the comment section. All right, so we want to hear from you guys. Who do you think is going to have the biggest impact on Chrome and why? Drop your answer down below. RJ and I are going to go down there and pick a random winner, and you will get a chance to win a Chrome block tee. That's it for us this week, guys. Make sure to comment down below to win a Chrome block tee. And as we mentioned at the start of the episode, we hope this finds you all well and safe and that you're continuing to spend this time reflecting, engaging with those around you on how we can make this world a better place to live in for everyone. Stay safe, we love you, and we will see you next week.